Good morning. It is the 2nd of January. Last night I came down and I finished painting red oxide or the red bonder primer, which is like the zinc rich primer over everything. Um, I'm going to start today by repairing that little hole up there. <clears throat> just need to put a little patch in that I can do and then I can clean up that weld from both sides to make it really strong so I'm going to do that first I probably won't bother recording much of this because it's just a bit boring now you get the idea patch now in I've again not ground it down silly because it doesn't need to be it'll be filled anyway so gotta go get the sill and offer that up and work out how I'm going to attach it. Incidentally, that has been all painted, primed, nice and straight. Uh, so it should be fairly, well, I don't want to say this, uh, straightforward from now on. Spoke too soon. There is a bit more work to do on this sill. In the last video, I think I was explaining how the, the profile on the car wasn't the same as my repair sections. This end I've reprofiled so it's correct. Quite a strong bend there. The other end, which has the flange return to go onto the back end of the sill, is still very gentle. So I'm going to need to cut slots in that flange return so I can bend that up and make sure the profile is the same right the way along the length of the sill. Done some good old cardboard engineering. Um, to get the profile right, I really needed a template. So that is a template off the sill on the other side of the car, which I know hasn't been molested and is correct. And I've been using this to get my profiles right on here and see if I balance this properly so you can see. It's a lot better than it was. It's still not perfect but the curve is getting there. Excuse the noise. So that front end's pretty good. The rear end and most of that bit's good. Now I just need to do this section. And what I'm doing is just leaning it and folding it with my hands over the edge of that steel on my trailer. Don't know whether that shows up, but it is a lot more curved now in the right place. So that's what's going after, and it, it's not perfect. Don't get me wrong, but compared to what I had before, it's significantly better all the way along. Even that bit, which was problematic because it's obviously a lot stiffer. Um, so it's good i think we've got a bit of a flare there it like comes up but this has to have another strip welded on and then go in the car and it's right at the bottom of the wing which kind of is misshapen anyway so that's not so bad i had a bit of a twist in it along its length but i've got that out so gonna go back to the car and um, see how it fits progress is at least being made but it's painfully slow because now I might have bent it too much. If it's really nice at the rear and you know it's nice and straight so that's good and it's a lot nicer repair than had I just done little sections but I've got to now pull this out so that it butts up nicely against that flange and then I can weld it. But I think to do that, I'll either need to use self-tappers or Clico pins again. And doing that's going to take ages and be really frustrating to align the holes on the outside of here with the inside of that 
Fun times. In my quest for finding lazy ways of doing things, I've discovered that there's actually quite a lot of room if I don't clamp that bottom edge up. In fact, enough room to get a screwdriver in and push that forward like that. I've taken a reference measurement off the other side of the car and I know the swage line gap, like the distance between that top edge and this edge here in the skin needs to be 15 millimeters. So all I have to do is push that along and then get my steel rule and move this up and down until I get 15 millimeters and then tack it. And I'll do that in a few places all the way along and hopefully I should be able to weld that in without having to drill loads of holes for Clecos and fanny around with all of that lot. And then I won't need to weld and fill in the holes that I've drilled for Clecos. So it should make for a much nicer job. So I'm gonna go get a cup of tea, then come back, set up the camera and just try and bash through it. Well, so far, cunning plan number 45 is working. I've got uh, that tack in there, that tack in there. So I'm happy with the height. The distances to the door haven't changed. I've got a tack up the front where that clamp is and that's still just clamped. I've just trimmed off excess material on the bottom of this wing. Basically, I'd left it a bit long. So now I know where this is going, I've trimmed that back. So I'm just going to carry on tacking along the top edge and as I do so pushing out from behind with my trusty screwdriver pushing this forward onto that. I've also been careful <coughs> to maintain the position of this lower quarter because that could move in or out depending on what I do with that sill. So every time I tack it I'm just making sure that I haven't screwed that bit up. This is really quite fiddly. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting there now, but it is quite annoying because you have to bear in mind that that gap might look nice now. You tack it, but as soon as you push that in, that bottom edge rolls down slightly. So I'm having to be careful and almost preempt how much it's going to move down at different places. Uh, I couldn't get this up as high as I would have liked, but it's consistent all the way through, which is good because the body shop can fill that and then they can sort of trick the eye with where they finish the blue and start the black. So that should all be okay. So just more of the same really. I'm about probably halfway through I would guess now. And I've just cleaned off some of my worlds. I'd love to say that this was beautiful, picture perfect welding, but it ain't because I've still got this problem where that is relatively thick, nice clean metal. This is thinner and obviously hanging in free air is just an edge and lip, and whereas that behind is a nice flat panel. So every time you try and weld it, it just burns that back and then you don't get enough penetration into there. So it's been a real ball like trying to get the welder set up and you can just see here where I've peened with a hammer just like smash that down a bit just to make better contact and then it, then you can just about weld it but crucially everything's in the right place um i've still got my detail line running through there there's no warping to that panel uh and the line of the sill looks really good so i'm just going to finish up now i've done one big spot weld under here or plug weld sorry to hold that in the right place and then once i've done all this then I'll do all the rest of them underneath and the back edge. Really cannot believe how long this is taking. It is on at the top and welded. I'm moving my camera deliberately quickly so you can't see how bad that welding is. I've come to the conclusion that I really hate joggled edges. They're just a complete arse to weld. If you've got an overlap weld, you can push the top surface down and make a really nice weld between the two. but even with Clecos, panel pins, whatever, there's, I don't think there's any way I'd have closed that up. There probably is, and that's you know how pros do it, I guess. But for me, it's a lot easier just to do an overlap weld, then sort of make sure you don't grind it off too much. You know, like that. That took 
fraction of the time that this has taken. It's nearly dark again and I've got so much to do still on this car. I thought I'd have until um, mid to end of January, but the body shop have finished the green car and they want it out of the way. And I don't want to have to drive up and down twice. Under here, it's all looking like that's gonna go on lovely, all nice and straight. I just need to come along and um, clean out the Bonda primer behind and then go through with a MIG, but that should be nice. And then the final bit will be to make a strip to just go in there and close that off. Uh, but I'm a bit pissed off and annoyed with myself that this looks so horrific. So I'm gonna go and get yet another cup of tea. I'm gonna etch prime this as well. And then I might even put some filler in it to sort of hide it from the body shop a little bit. It's officially night time. That's the view up towards the trailer. And you basically can't see anything. I'm under the car doing plug spot welds, but I'm losing the world to live and I really can't be bothered anymore. So I'm giving up. I can't believe this has taken as long as it has. Uh, yeah, really annoying. Another day, another load of welding. I'm doing all the plug welds along the bottom edge of the sill. I've got my screw jack just holding the rear lip up and then I'm tapping it up at the rear edge with a hammer to get a really nice close seam. And then I've got the MIG welder turned up quite high to make sure I get good penetration into here. I'm gonna try and demonstrate one of these plug welds. This Bonda primer, the red stuff, is not actually weld through primer. It's rich in zinc, but it's not the same as the sort of U-pole weld through primer you get in a can that comes out silver. But there's so much zinc in it and the weld has turned up so high that it's actually just burning through. So I'm not actually having to clean out any of that red stuff out of there before I zap it with the MIG welder, <coughs> which is really useful. And yeah, I've got my jack holding the panel up. I've bashed that bit up with the hammer and then I just weld it. And then while it's still warm, give it a more of a whack to get that seam really closed up but we shall try and do one. The last two here were beautifully neat and that would have been really nice to record, but it would have made me look awesome. But sadly, it <laughs> doesn't always go like that. You see, when I first struck up the arc, the MIG wire bounced off there because it's not actually conductive. But once it's hot enough, it does burn through. So what happens is it strikes an arc up off the edge of here, melts the MIG wire, which then burns through the paint, which then conducts into that. And then you can aim the wire into that reinforcing panel at the back or the thick stuff. Sure you get the idea we shall try again i really should be trimming back the the gun each time and cleaning it out because all the crap and spatter drops inside and then it limits how much shielding gas you're getting but uh the mix turned up so high that it doesn't really make a lot of difference At the rear and front of this sill, there isn't just your stiffener, there's something else inside as well. So it's a bit thicker metal and also the sill doesn't sit perfectly flush. It actually has a, a step in it, which isn't in this second or no, you know, 
aftermarket skin, it's just in the originals. Consequently, it's probably going to be a bit, a bit lumpier up this end. So you can see here, it's going up and over something. That's because there's some sort of more strengthening stuff down here for the jacking point, which is there. good one they're nice when they work out properly because you got less grinding to do <clears throat> is it recording yes it is Because I know that rib or whatever it is is behind there, I've left the heat on a little bit longer to make sure I get good penetration. Hopefully I can just get into that one without moving the jack again. I've had a couple where it's tried to burn right the way through and that's because when the first person who repaired this area drilled out the original skin they didn't fill in the bits underneath where they drilled through into that reinforcer so if my plug weld hole just happened to align up with one of those it would burn through because they'd already taken quite a lot of material out so that's been a, a minor irritation. Nearly there to the rear, I've still got a lot to do at the front. Burning through my light with my mic welder. Cool, right. So that's about half the seal done now. I only need to do the front end, same process. But you can see, apart from my terrible welding along here, that seal section is really nicely shaped and fits there perfect. All the gaps to here are right and um, all in all it's a pretty good job the other good thing i've noticed is and i have to go outside to show you this ouch here's the old wing and you can see the stone chipping comes right up onto the bottom of that bit where i've made my horrible welded joint so 
I'm going to ask the body shop if they can replicate that so they can put filler in do all that nicely and then the um, the, the bad welds I put in won't need to be ground down anymore they can just be tossed over so I'm going to chop that bit off bolt that back on the car and then I'm going to put epoxy on everything below that line and then it should be ready for the body shop or at least this side will be then I've just got two days to do all of the other side just another subtlety to this I'm trying to get that seam along here as straight as I can that's the shape that I was trying to replicate and I'm pretty much there just needs to belly in a little bit so I'm pushing it with my knee and pulling it across with the grips and that allows me excuse me a moment to and again I can't really do it like one handed but with enough hand strength with two hands I can just close that up so that it that line is parallel and this profile sits right well it's taken a while but that's the full length of the underside of the sill plug spot welded in towards the end I did actually start cleaning off the bonder primer just because I thought well I might as well so I was just scrubbing it with the end of a chisel just to make sure there was nice clean metal for the MIG to strike onto now I'm going to make the closing strip for here which shouldn't be too difficult I'm also going to make it a little bit deeper um, just so that it fits with the wing nicely so that's my front end of wing back on its mountings with a bit as an m6 bolt down there you can just use it to double check the profile and it's pretty good you've got some flexibility because obviously you can if you really needed to you could space that out or reshape the bottom edge of the wing so all in all i'm pretty happy with that i was going to make and fabricate a strip but it occurred to me that I've already got the right profile in the bottom of this wing so I'm just going to use that that will save me a lot of time I was wanting to use um, this bit here because it has the deepest profile to match the front end of the sill but it's a bit crusty so instead I'm going to take this bit and then I'll just have to put a bigger fold in the top when I weld it in the car that bit is now welded in it welds so much nicer as a butt weld than it did when i was trying to do that overlap along there well not overlap joggled edge um the heat just flows nicely so you get nice ignore that bit obviously that's a uh, aberration of the camera that is ignore that yeah that bit look how nicely that works and i think also because you're welding down rather than up underneath it just welds nicely so i'm going to clean all that off grind down all of the plug welds underneath and then what i want to do is put epoxy on here um i've noticed that the what looked like zintec covering on those sill sections it isn't it's like a paint with zinc in it which isn't great because the solvent reacts with it and then it just becomes a big slimy mess so in some places I thought when I put a thick coat of the bonder on it reacted with it and came off if it was proper Zintec it's electrolytically applied so it doesn't react with solvents it's actually bonded to the metal at, I don't know with what atomic electrical level I don't know what you call it but basically it doesn't come off so I'm going to clean this up as I say and then take all of that back to bare metal which will be a ball lake and then give it quite a rough key because the epoxy doesn't like smooth surfaces like it would never stick to that because it's quite polished now um, whereas if I really rough that up the epoxy will stick to it like a bitch okay, I've done my first pass with the sanding disc just to take that to bare metal um, now I'm going to go over it with some very rough, what's that, 60 grit paper by hand because I don't have a tool, which is annoying, but that'll take another, I don't know, 10 minutes probably. 
I've just been doing the final prep to this wheel arch lip as well. So I've ground the paint off because I actually want to put the epoxy on the wheel arch lip all the way around and then that area down there <coughs> excuse me um, I've also run a wire wheel on a drill around the back of the inside of there I don't know whether that's showing up I shall see later but yeah to um, I'm going to paint the back side of that as well and I've been around with a hammer and just tapped the wheel arch lip up so that that seam is closed tight and then I can stipple with the paintbrush into it and basically fully water tight tighten it um, the whole of the underside is now bare metalled and keyed so I'm gonna go and get some degreaser stuff now and degrease all of that ready for painting and then I'll go and find a copy of the data sheet for the Jota and remind myself uh, what the mixture is this is the Jotun Jotomastic 87. I'm using the black one and in standard grade. You can get winter grade as well, which means you can put it on in colder temperatures. The data sheet says no colder than 10 degrees C. I don't know what it is today. It's quite mild, but it's quite humid, so it should be okay. And it says substrate has to be clean, uh, a rough key and no colder than 10 degrees as well so i'm going to mix it up now it's six parts of that to one part of that so i've got my little mixing cup with the grades on it um you've got to stir that bit first that doesn't matter and that's just the hardener then leave it in the cup for a while to go off before you then paint it on it's pretty thick gloopy stuff before you stir it so all of the sediment all of the I know the thicker parts are at the bottom and you need to give it a really good stir before you bother putting the hardener with it otherwise you'll just get a crap paint here's an example of what the Jotun looks like uh, this car has been well this is the 827 it's been outside probably two years two and a half years since I put a new wheel arch lip in it and new sills both sides the full length and this has just been it's never been top coated um, that rust has formed just because I never protected it properly just I think it had acid etch primer or something which isn't waterproof but that Jotun is as good as the day I put it on which is um, pretty impressive really considering it's never had a top coat or anything it's just really hard to really hard rust preventative paint and then that's the underside that was done in u-pole gravitex over the top of the Jotun and it's been good as gold even though I've you know just left it unprotected okay that has all gone on now I've absolutely slapped it on I'm quite unapologetic about that I've also done the full length of the seal and I've done that bit up there where I had some surface rust which I rubbed off and then I've done the full length inside as well and I'm really pleased with this because that the body lines all look really perfect the last thing to do is probably tomorrow once this has gone off is seam seal that bottom edge uh, so that when it's stone chipped all of that is perfectly watertight some bad news now I in readiness for the next step which is of course to do all of this again on the other side well uh, and initially I didn't anticipate having to go to this extent of changing the whole sill but I've just had a poke around on the other side and it's really bad um, I thought this side was going to be worse because it had been repaired in the past and you could visibly see the rust the other side initially it didn't look so bad until I started attacking it with a chisel and it's just popped a load of rust out so I've had to order some new repair sections for the other side and they're not going to arrive until next week which means I'm never going to be able to finish this car before the weekend which was when I was supposed to be taking this up and getting the green tourer back so there's going to be a delay 
and it also means that um, I'll be having to do this in the evenings after work. <coughs> Sorry, just managed to cut the video off there. As you can see, this all looked really solid, it wasn't rusty, but actually when you stick a chisel in it, there is rust there. It doesn't go as far forward, I don't think, but it ain't great. So I've erring on the side of caution and bought more sill sections, but as I say, they're not going to arrive till next week, but I'm never going to be able to finish the car before the weekend. So rather frustrating, but I'll have a bit more time hopefully and I can do a better but better job and save myself some money at the body shop. I think I might have actually lucked out a bit here. I've just chopped with the grinder. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not great, but it's better than it looks. Yes, the stiffener is a bit crusty. But it's not rotten, it's just surface rust where water has sat against it. And some of this shitty shit, it's not shit, it's actually just the old seam sealer. Which you can pull off, it's stretchy, so I, I wouldn't mind betting that by the time that's all picked apart with the sanding disc, that's going to look a lot less scary. In fact, look at that. That's all just surface grot on there. So I'm pretty sure that all of that, oh actually that bit's a bit crusty, but most of it's going to clean up to leave good metal to weld back onto, so not so bothered. The skin, which appeared nasty, I've just put the disc through it and chopped it. And really, if I get my hand out of the way, and get some light on it so you can see. Uh, where are we? Down there. Uh, that is the bottom edge. That is the top edge where it isn't rusty. It's still got um, anti-corrosion wax on it. So I am rather more optimistic and I'm thinking that rather than doing what I did on the other side, which was a right pain in the ass, chopping the whole sill out, joining curved sections together to get the profile right. What I'm going to do down here is chop along that body line there. I can feel inside that that is all good metal. I'll have to get the car away from the wall to do this, obviously. In fact, yeah, that's the wax coming off on my finger. There's no actual rust up there, which is really good. So I'm going to chop all the way along, clean it all off, and then hopefully I can just put a flat edge plug welded onto there and then seam welded along here and then I can lose the weld in that body line so maybe I didn't need to go and buy a whole load more repair sections and maybe I can get a lot more of this done than I anticipated so um, I'm going to do what I usually do at this point run away have a cup of tea and a sandwich and then come back this afternoon and do some more pokage <laughs> 